Hello my darlings and welcome back to another Design Me Devon. We have not done one of these in quite a while and yet here we are doing one today. Sticking in with the kind of autumnal spooky kind of vibe, I found a really gorgeous Tudor style house that one of you guys used the hashtag Design Me Devon and asked me to give it a makeover. So that's exactly what we're going to go ahead and do today. Now, excuse the hat, didn't want to do my hair today, couldn't be asked absolutely not and those are the vibes we're just going to carry on through in today's video so let's get on over have a little look at the house that we're going to be renovating today and we'll make a bloody start and so here we are my darlings at pindenberg rose cottage this amazing build was done by the cozy nook so thank you so much for uploading this i absolutely loved it you were obviously doing your own kind of series because i've just read here another build one of my favorites i agree it's gorgeous in my Pindenberg series. So make sure to check out this hashtag um, where I rebuild Windenberg using inspiration from Pinterest. Rose Cottage sits on the Shrieking Llama lot, which is the pub lot, which is where we've put it. This centuries old home has spectacular views. The neighbors are quite are sure it's haunted, but the new owner finds it quiet and cozy. She's slowly cleaning up and making the place feel like home. I just loved the look of this. It was really, really, really pretty. And I absolutely loved renovating this, I did. So without further ado, let's get on over and have a little look around the build before we go ahead and put our own stamp on it. And here she is in all of her beauty. I think it's absolutely gorgeous, this house. I love the use of like the circular turret that you've done over on this side here. Really liked playing around with that. In my, in my renovation, I put a little like playroom in the top, complete with like a little puppet show thing. And then in the bottom one, I utilized it and made it into an office. But I just loved this house. I thought it was absolutely gorgeous. You've done such a good job with this. You really, really have. All of the details are absolutely gorgeous. Love that big like front um, roof piece that you've got going on there. I think that's lovely. And it kind of like overhangs um, over into the main entrance. Just think it's gorgeous. And then around the back area here, we've got a lovely little moment out here as well, which is kind of mirrored on through. I actually ended up pulling the roof line down a little bit and I changed all the windows as well. In my head, all of these windows have just rotted. So I ended up using the growing together windows, which I've not really utilized in a house before. And I just think it really, really suited this one. It really did. It was bloody lovely. So downstairs, you come in through this way. You've got your little entrance in here. You've got a little um, living area over to this side, a dining room around here. And then you've got this kitchen area in here. I just think this flows really nicely. But what I did was just get rid of all of these walls. I'm into my open plan living at the minute, but I separated everything off by doing quite a high platform and having the kitchen over here, the living room in this part here. And then I did a dining room here. And then I utilized this for a toilet downstairs. I put a toilet here. I made this, as I said, it, this is an office. So I kind of kept that and had that as an office as well. And then upstairs, I didn't change the floor plan at all. I thought the floor plan was great up here. As it was downstairs, I just wanted something a little bit different. Um, but I just loved this floor plan up here. So what I actually did was move this bathroom into a smaller sort of room here. And we've got four bedrooms. I did one main bedroom. And then what I did was a teen bedroom, a children's bedroom and a nursery so a big four bedroom family house, like um, it was perfect. And then, as I said, I made this into like a little playroom um, for the children. I just thought that was a very good idea. And I had absolutely loads of fun renovating this. I really did. I'm sticking in with the spooky vibes this week. We're going to carry on and continue on through. Tomorrow, what we're going to be doing is building a tiny home in the Forgotten Hollow. I really want to do a little tiny home for a vampire. I think that would be a very nice thing to finish off the spooky week vibes that we've got going on but anyway cozy nook thank you once again for bringing this to my attention and allowing me to give this a bit of a renovation what we're going to do now is head on over and make a start on that renovation and so here we are my loves as always with design with devon with the clean up process first so i ended up stripping this house back getting rid of a lot of these this ivy that was kind of swamping the build i wanted to peel it back and see what i was working with properly and that's where I was like, oh, do you know what? I'm thinking about changing the windows now just to give it a little bit more of a fresher vibe. And I'm glad that I did. It really came out quite nicely. Back here, we put like a veranda. I've raised the foundation up and put a little like um, veranda area where they can look over their land. And it just, it really, really worked. Didn't end up keeping any of the furniture, really. We ended up getting rid of it, stripping it back. We do go for a very darker vibe on the interior. I wanted that to kind of come through, but still feel like a nice family home as well. So, um, 
with the bedrooms we play around with a tiny little bit of color but not too much i just wanted everything to be these dark woody sort of like tones and sort of fit in with the uh, kind of tudor-esque style that this house is and i also change out a few of the wallpapers in the in the on the outside and also on the interior i wanted more of that timber frame in the interior and i change out that brick for a slightly different brick we go for the realm of magic brick on the outside but yes it was very nice and i did want to fence in this area slightly so i do this little fence moment in the front and i end up like putting a gate there i put two gates on either side of this um as I, I don't do it just yet i move on a little bit more i move on a little bit more progress on a little bit more and we put them in a little bit further along oh here we go we're in it now so i use that door we put up these marvelous little hedges around here i bring out some more trees and stuff just to bring a bit of greenery because as soon as i took all the ivy off i was like oh it needs some greenery now because i've got i've just got rid of it um so i end up putting in some more trees and stuff around the lot itself and it just bloody worked loves it really did um i actually you you can see with this lot it doesn't connect to the actual road and that really annoys me that annoys me with several sims 4 lots so i do something with some rugs in a second you know those rugs that look like rocks that came with get together we end up using those or paving slabs they look like paving slabs um and i use them and connect in the road with them and it just bloody works loves we put a little bit of ivy up just on this front area here and um i just i think it's i think it's just enough greenery enough greenery for a nice fresh looking house these windows are beautiful they really really are but i just wanted to put my own stamp on it so you can see i'll end up getting rid of them in a second and do my own little moment to them that came a little bit later on um when i was thinking do you know what let's do something a bit different but yeah those little paving slabs there i kind of connect them into the side and they just help connect it to the road a little bit more i thought that was a little bit more um of what i wanted it really was and this is where we put um, that little veranda on the outside. I did struggle up where I was going to be putting the stairs and stuff. With this particular lot itself, it almost looks like it's got a huge bit of land around it anyway. Um, so I wasn't going to fence in the back garden or anything. It just looked like that belonged to the house in it itself. So that's what we ended up doing. I shortened this down and put the stairs over on that side instead because it made more sense because... Um, that was where the dining room and kitchen is and i wanted the dining room and kitchen to have the access really out into this little veranda area stunning absolutely stunning um playing around a little bit of the terrain manipulation as well and this is me coming in and changing all the windows up i wanted to use some of these like stained glassy looking windows and these ones here i just really thought it suit this house lovely uh and i was glad that i did i'm glad that i did that i did that quite later on into the build you can see all of the landscaping and stuff kind of semi done this is me going inside and just checking it all you can probably make out the interior a little bit i have changed the floor plan downstairs to so it allowed me to know where to put the bloody windows um and it just really worked i just thought it looked bloody lovely and yeah love tudor style houses i really do they are very spooky that the the house style that spooks me out the most because i had a bit of a spooky experience in one um many many years ago my friend lives or her parents had a tudor style home and it was absolutely gorgeous really gorgeous but it was very haunted it really really was we used to hear people run down the corridors and stuff and so i'm always a bit like oh a bit scared of them now uh, <laughs> just because they're so old and yeah don't like them i do like them i love them they're just very spooky but yeah little veranda area wanted to do a little bit of a dining space out here didn't want to put a barbecue out here it just didn't really fit the aesthetics of the build itself i know that sounds weird but it just didn't look right. So we didn't. And we're done with the exterior. Really simple. Just changed the windows, really. I just thought everything else was perfect as it was. So you can see what I mean by this. This is like a small little living room nook that we've got going on. I've obviously already pre-chosen everything that I'm using. And then we've got this kind of higher raised up platform where I'm going to be putting the kitchen and the dining room. It just flows really nicely, even though it still feels like it's separated off. You can probably see I've used some, um, what are they called again? The spandrels there we go i use the spandrels to just kind of give it a little bit more feeling of a separation and i really like it mixing up lots of brown browns and blacks in here as well um end up going for the base game kitchen i just thought it suited this build the most i did try the vampires one but it just no not the vampires one the realm of magic one but it just looked a little bit too detailed for this build so didn't want to do that didn't want to do that but i just thought this kitchen was in a lovely area 
raised up with that amazing new fence. You can see over to the left. Oh, no, it's under me. The one from uh, the ranch pack, the horses ranch pack. I just love that fence. I'm, I'm using it quite a lot in all builds, even modern builds. I just think it looks lovely. And obviously went for a nice island here as well. There was enough space for it. This is a big family home. I just wanted this area to just kind of like have that family dynamic around it. So you can imagine everybody's down here doing their own thing, but being together. And I like that. I do like that a lot. I really do. Um, but yeah, gorgeous. Wanted some extra lighting underneath of the kitchen cupboards. So I use those art lights just to bring a little bit more of a brightness over to this area. Um, you can obviously see I've used wooden, uh, the same texture on the floor as the ceiling. Again, I just wanted it to feel swamped and a little bit spooky, but I still wanted this house to look really nice. And I think it does. I think it absolutely does. It really does. So two bedrooms, four bathrooms. You could even have this as a five bedroom house if you wanted to use the little turret room for a bedroom. You could do that. You might be able to squeeze a bed in there, but trying to furnish a circular room is not fun in The Sims 4. I don't, I can imagine it's fun in real life either because I would imagine everything would have to be custom made and we can't do that in The Sims 4. No, we cannot. Um, I would love to see some maybe CC. No, actually I wouldn't because the circular rooms and the curved walls don't work properly as far as I'm concerned. So once they get fixed, if they ever get fixed, let's be real. Um, I would love to see some like furniture that fits into circular rooms, like a circular kitchen or something. See how that could work. I don't know how feasible that would be, but I would like to see it. Thank you. This is me trying to struggle to get a rug in because nothing likes to sit inside a circular room properly. Love that for us. Um, and I just put in a desk, I put in a desk, a little plant over in here. And I think I put a bookshelf in here. Again, very hard to furnish a circular room. But I just thought that was just enough in this room. Was there something else I put in here? Oh, I've got some pictures up on the wall. I use the ones from Get Together. Um, just the old style looking ones. Because there's loads of like Tudor houses in these pictures. I just thought it maybe could have been people who lived in this house years ago before it was occupied by someone else, you know? kind of vibing with that love those pictures i really do i would like to see more like that in the sims so as i said two bathrooms they're both full bathrooms as well so they've both got the exact same stuff that i'm putting in them now the toilet the bath and shower and also the sink and that's it that's it and yeah very much works i play test everything so your sims should be able to get everywhere but yeah don't show you how i furnish the other one because you've already seen that one it would be boring wouldn't it yes it would so this is the main bedroom. They're all exactly the same size apart from the nursery. They're all five by six, I think they were. Um, so it's a nice size for a small bedroom. You can still fit everything in it and put enough detail in there to make it look lived in, which is what I did. Double bed, um, chair, wardrobe, mirror, plants, all of that kind of good stuff, rug. And I just think it really looked very rather nice. What am I going to be putting here? I can't remember if what I Oh yeah, that little sage stick moment i just thought that would be perfect now in my head this was a teen's bedroom so i put i do put in a double bed i push it up to get up against the wall but we put a desk and stuff in here and off camera i put in like a, a stereo and stuff in here as well i did forget to do that but i put the little kind of like what looks like a bluetooth speaker on a little wooden stand i forgot where that came from was it with the high school years i can't remember but i put that up on top of the desk as well um and it just it just worked it just worked and a bookshelf because they might be studying at school and stuff you know i wanted everything to fit in here kind of nicely and it really did it really did indeed very nice simple to the point that's what we want isn't it to be honest and then this is the children's bedroom so the children the child in my head was love to play a bit of make-believe and stuff that's why i gave them their own kind of like dress up room in the turret i do maybe they put on shows and stuff in there a bit like little women you know i love that film so much um especially the older one i did like the newer one but i preferred the older one um but yeah i just thought that was in my head they were kind of like a make-believe so i made sure to kind of make that apparent with a lot of their stuff they're kind of a creative kid hence the creative table that i'm putting in and stuff um you've always i've always got to have some kind of person in my head that I'm building for and it just really helps out with everything it does indeed yes it does indeed but yeah very cute indeed that came together I like that little room and then this is the nursery so the nursery is very simple um put in the crib put in a little um chest of drawers a little rocking chair to rock them off to sleep at night this is a very cute room actually I really like the aesthetics in here um I just thought it worked nicely especially with those curtains I never tend to use those curtains because they're disgusting 
but I just thought they suited this house, so that's why I went and used them. How much have we got left here? Because I don't know how much I'm waffling on. Um, we've got 50 seconds, loves. 50 bloody seconds. Uh, and then a little rug to finish off that room. And this was that little kind of like playroom that I was on about. I just think it um, added something in this turret. This little one whimsical, wonderful place, like up in a castle's turret. I just thought it like matching quite nicely. Um, but yeah, that's it. You are going to go and watch a video tour now. I think I put in a few more bits and bobs in here. I can't remember what else I do put in here. But um, whatever it was, I'm sure it was bloody marvellous. Oh, a little dressing up stand. There we go. Anyway, um, you're going to go and watch a video tour. I'll see you all tomorrow in my next video. Goodbye.